Well, hey there, how's it going? My name's Matt, and I love snakes. Specifically, western hognose snakes. I've got two of them right here. And we're lucky enough that we just hatched out baby hognose snakes. I've been incubating these two parents' eggs for the past, I think it was about 53, 54 days. And they just finally started hatching. The babies just started popping out of their eggs, and a few of them even climbed out so far and it's super exciting. Um, if you guys didn't know, western hognose snakes actually live here in Minnesota. Actually, we're really lucky. We have both western hognose snakes and eastern hognose snakes. So two different species of hognose here in Minnesota. And they're called hognose snakes because, well, if you look really close up here, they've got a nose that's turned up, kind of like a pig's nose. Um, it's pretty awesome. They actually use their nose um, to dig around in the dirt. They can't really dig um, big holes per se, you know, like gophers and stuff do, but they can use it to kind of burrow themselves into loose leaf litter and and just uh, be able to hide into the, the duff, you know, the loose stuff on the ground. But their, their nose is actually pretty hard. It's uh, hardened keratin, it's called. And uh, it's, it's really cute. I think they look pretty silly. Um, we've got really rough scales and it, as you can see right here her belly is usually solid black but right now it's kind of a milky white slash blue color and so are her eyes and that's because she's about to shed her skin. Now all reptiles actually do shed their skin um, as, they, as they age and as they get bigger their outer layer of, of scales actually kind of gets beat up and so they're constantly growing new scales underneath to replace those old scales and so they periodically shed their skin and as they're growing they have to shed their skin more maybe it's because it's getting too tight and the, the under layer has to they have to shed that outer layer so the under layer can keep growing um, that's something that people have thought maybe is the case but whatever the reason they shed their skin and she's about to shed her skin herself. Um, so about a month and a half, two months ago, this girl laid eggs. And before she laid eggs, she looked huge. She was full of eggs. And this is actually her first time laying eggs. And she laid 10 beautiful, perfect eggs. Uh, no bad ones at all. And here's a picture of what those eggs look like. And then here's a picture of our incubator set up and what we did to incubate those and then finally this is what the babies look like all right so as you can see all the hognose snakes except for one egg there have started to come out of their eggs most of them have just popped their head through and they actually do that by using an egg tooth that's a little tooth that's on the front of their face and that little tooth falls off shortly after they crawl out but also right after they crawl out they shed their skin and uh, the one who's crawling around right there he just shed his skin it's kinda hard to see but it's on the ground there but yeah they're all starting to come out well a couple days later most of the hognose snakes have crawled out of their eggs there are three who have still decided that their eggs are nice and cozy and they don't want to come all the way out quite yet but most of them have come out and most of them that have come out have already shed their skin and it looks like we have four super condas three condas and three wild type or normal phase hognose snakes all right so these two snakes are not actually the wild type pattern that you would find um, if, you'd f if you found them outdoors here in Minnesota. Um, in the pet hobby, in the reptile hobby, people have liked to find unique looking snakes and then breed them, get some really cool pattern mutations going on. So these two snakes are actually what people call anaconda morph hognose snakes. So what that means is their pattern just looked kind of funky. When someone found the first one, they were like, huh, that looks a lot like how a green anaconda looks. So I'm gonna name this the anaconda morph. 
and just so happens that when you breed two anaconda morphs together you get a patternless snake that people call a super anaconda or super conda morph we're going to get into that more in the next video we're going to we're going to talk about some basic genetics which is really cool and it's really cool that i've got to to uh show this in action how these how these genes work and not all of my baby hognose things have come out of their eggs yet they've all kind of popped through the eggs but we're going to see pretty soon how our ratios ended up because it's always a guessing game it's uh it's about probabilities and it's kind of fun seeing how that ended up so thanks for tuning in guys we're going to get some more videos in the future i just love snakes and hopefully i can share some of that with you guys and you'll learn a bunch and have fun along with me